Hello and welcome to Hamer Reviews. My name is Christopher Hamer and today I'm reviewing the Nikon 35mm 1.8 S lens for the Z mount series cameras. Now, when I initially started this channel, I was recording everything with my Z6 and to a certain extent, I still do. There are however situations where I'd either like a second angle that I can shoot at the same time, or indeed just the ability to mix things up and have the Z6 in the actual reviews from time to time, and equally just useful having a second backup camera. It's been actually a while since I have had a backup camera, but I bought the Z50 recently, of which there will be a review coming in due course, and as a result, I needed a nice fast prime lens to shoot video with. Now I had considered adapting either the 35mm 1.8 DX lens uh, with the F to Z adapter, or indeed um, buying the 35mm 1.8 S. Now, given I I'm utterly in love with the 50mm 1.8S. I thought I should probably have a go with this one. And the good news is that I haven't been disappointed. In terms of optical performance, this 35mm lens is fantastic. In addition, it's a similar size to the 50mm 1.8S, which means it's massive in comparison to its F-mount counterparts. Now I'm not necessarily referring to the 35mm DX lens because that was tiny just because it was obviously meant for the DX sensor cameras. This lens is actually just a fraction shorter than the 35mm 1.4G which in itself was quite a large lens so you're already starting to get quite a lot of glass for your money once again. And that's probably just as well, because this lens retails at around £700, which is a lot of money. Admittedly, I bought mine in the August rebates, or it might have been just before that actually, but it had already been discounted down to around £600, which was a lot more palatable. So what do you get for your money? Well, as with other um, S lenses, you get the cloth pouch which doesn't really provide any protection and I probably wouldn't use if I were you. You get a lens hood, the front and rear lens caps and of course the lens. The lens itself actually isn't that incredible in terms of how it looks. It's the same black design. You have a mixture of good quality plastics and metal and you also have a lovely large metal focus ring. Now the focus ring on these lenses is quite a, is quite interesting because you can actually use it as a control ring or as a focus ring. So you could, for instance, use it to change the aperture rather than the um, focus distance if that's something that you, you'd like. So for instance, for video use, that's quite useful. Equally, you can also use it to change things like ISO as well. So it does give you the um, choice to do so. Of course, there is a cost at doing this, which is that this is... Um, focused by wire. So in theory, you can move this zoom ring as, sorry, focus ring as much as you like and you're not going to um, actually move any of those elements whilst the lens is switched off. This becomes something of an issue when you're manually focusing because it's actually not linear in terms of turning the barrel and the focus changing. So if you move it quickly, it actually accelerates the speed at which you're focusing. If you move it slowly, it sort of does it very, very slowly. So it doesn't actually relate to how far you turn the barrel. That can be frustrating. And if you're someone that does a lot of manual focusing or for instance, focus pulls when you're shooting video, you might find that a bit more difficult with the um, Z mount lenses, to be honest, because it, it's true of all of them except for the uh, knocked 0 0.95 58 millimeter lens. In terms of the aperture, obviously it's a 1.8 and for the money that they're charging plus for the size of the lens, you'd kind of expect 1.4. I think that what I said about the 50 millimeters is just as true here, which is really you don't notice. The quality of the glass is so good that you get beautiful out of focus areas when you do stop down to 1.8, but obviously it being a 35 millimeter, you probably not stopping down that low that often. I mean, I find when I'm shooting video I do, but other than that, I very infrequently use the 35 millimeter lens at 
but it still lets in enough light. And the fact of the matter is that even the Z50 or the Z6 have fantastic ISO capabilities, which mean that you don't really need to use it um, at 1.8 all the time. Um, you can actually stop up and, and still get that great low light performance. So perhaps it's not as necessary as it was with Nikon's DSLR range. The only button on the lens is the auto manual switch on the side, which will just switch between autofocus and manual focus. Obviously you have a manual focus override with all these anyway. So even if it's in auto mode, you can always uh, move the zoom, sorry, focus ring yourself to change the focus if you want to do so. Not quite sure why I have that stuck in my head. The filter thread size is 62 millimeters. Again, I think that's fairly standard um, for these Z series um, primes, uh, so no issues there. And the actual lens hood's quite a, quite a long one, actually. I was quite surprised. I was expecting it to be less deep, um, given this is 35 millimeters, but it's not. Um, it makes the, the lens very usable. If I mount it on the Z50, just to give you an idea of scale, I think it's actually a really well balanced combination. Um, you you have a, a beautiful um, 50 millimeter uh, focal length when mounted on the Z50, or just around 50 millimeters, which makes it great for video, which is why I picked one up. Um, obviously, if you're mounting on a DX sensor camera, you're not gonna get quite as much um, distortion because obviously you're only using the center of the lens. So it makes it a very good choice. But mounted on the Z6, as you'll have seen with some of the sample images, I think you still get beautiful um, shots. I mean, it's pretty good for street photography. I quite like it for landscapes as well. I like to get a little bit closer um, than perhaps the ultra wide angles. If I, if I want that, I'll pick up something like the 14 to 30, but often I find myself either at the extreme end at 14 millimeters or the longer end at 30 millimeters. I don't tend to use that sort of area in between. So this is a good prime um, for me. Optical quality is excellent, as I've mentioned. The lenses are just incredible. The sharpness is great. The color rendition is fantastic. The lack of ghosting when you shoot into the sun is very impressive. I still think that this series of lenses handles ghosting better than any other Nikon lenses I've used in the past. And equally, I see very little chromatic aberration on my images. So overall, I'm really, really pleased with it. It's light and small enough to be a nice hand holdable um, po not pocket size, but at least um, street size combo. So I think even this mounted on a Z6 is fairly innocuous. It's not too obvious. It's not like having a 70-200 mounted. So it's quite a nice balance for these mirrorless cameras. So overall, I'm very pleased with it. If I had any um, real issues with it, it is the price. It is pricey, I think. A lot of people say, yeah, but Nikon's plowed so much into the actual um, design of it, and it's a whole new evolution of, of their camera system. And that is true, and I don't disagree with that. My issue with the price is that it's the only 35 millimeter lens they've currently made available, you know, in the same way the 50 millimeter 1.8S is the only 50 mil lens that's available. I feel like we should have this lower price point of lenses that should have come in roughly at the same time because it would make the whole Z mount system a little bit more appealing to those that don't want to spend quite so much. Because I think £700 for a belly standard 35mm lens is a lot of money. So yes, it does provide the performance that you would expect from a Z mount series lens and system but it would be nice to see lower cost alternatives for those that don't have quite so much to spend. So hopefully you found this useful. Um, it's actually the third time I've recorded this because I recorded it once and the audio didn't come out and the second time I've managed to lose the video file. So hopefully you, you guys will actually get to enjoy this. Um, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, pop them in the comment section below. If you haven't already, please do subscribe. It really helps the channel. And hopefully I'll see you again next time. Thanks very much for watching. Goodbye.